Now we move into the two most important concepts and control structures, in fact, of all of programming. Today's will be loops, for loops in fact, and later on we'll be getting into if-else conditional blocks or if statements. So this is it. I mean these two things the world is built upon. You just you just cannot underestimate how important these two things are. So for loops, as with all the other videos, you can just watch th through this first. I'll introduce a few things, but certainly, as always, do watch the video, do do the quiz, and then move on to what was shown. So how to start this. As in class, I'm actually going to start, well, I could just run this and show you what happens. Corral's going to run to the other side. He's going to move nine times. Okay. And if I were to have you look at the code step by step, you'll see something interesting that it's repeating. But as I did with the students live in class, I'm going to do with you and uh, not teach you the for loop first, as 99.99% .99 of the time loops probably have been taught, either in school, university, or online. And uh, do this my way. I'm going to teach you the while loop first, and you'll see why. So we can, in fact, just get rid of this as you watch. So this is not something to skim through with my video. This is something that is uh, not in this curriculum, uh, the way that I'm doing it. And I suppose the other thing to do before we even start that is take a step back even further and talk about how, if you put something up here just to take a look at, computers are good at two things. If I just put up some semi-random nice big program. Okay, here's a nice big program, semi-random just to have something in the background as I talk through the fact that computers are good at two things, really, ultimately. And that is doing many things all at once. And even just scrolling up and down here, I am changing the screen. Think about all these pixels. Let me just see if I can do this. Right. These are ultimately pixel squares that are different colors. And when I scroll up and down, ultimately, you can think of this as a picture and all these words are moving up and down. And every time the screen refreshes, I'd have to take a look here and see how many pixels there are. I'll go to displays and see what my resolution is. So multiply 1440 times 900, and let's just call it a million, there are a million pixels, a million different three phosphor units of monitor that can glow. And most of them are white. Over here, most of them are going to not even change. Or at least over here, none of them are going to change. Well, I guess like right up here, down that edge, as I scroll up and down, there's a band of white that's not going to change. But everything else is changing. And so here's what I'm getting to, is that those million pixels they're changing, and not just once per second. So that's a whole lot of stuff going on inside the computer. And what makes it do that is what we're going to be learning today with a for loop. But the first point is that that's powerful. It's powerful for a computer to be able to do millions of things in a second. The computer doesn't do anything that we haven't instructed it to do, at least not uh, till this day and age with machine learning, and that's another story for another time. But basically, the computer's just doing what we instruct it to do. It's just that it can do all the stuff so much more quickly. So that's the number one thing that computers are really, really good at. Maybe just I'll write this down. Number one, repeating lots of things, or just repeating stuff. Let's leave it at that. And the second thing they're really good at is dealing with 
complex decision making situations. Life is one big complex decision making situation, really. We go through our lives making lots of decisions. Well, so do computers. And anywhere you see an if else, which is just about everywhere in code, frankly, you've got computers that are making decisions about whether they're going to add $1,600 to the money of this RPG game, or 700 or 300 depending on whether the player is a banker or a carpenter or a farmer, for example. That's, that doesn't seem too complicated, but the fact of the matter is, the combination of these two things, the fact that computers are good at repeating stuff, and that they can deal with complex decision-making situations, they can deal with really complex decision-making situations because they are able to repeat stuff so quickly. So that that's quick, and you'll hear <clears throat> those themes throughout the rest of this course, but that's why we're learning this for loop. But like I said, I'm going to start with a while loop. So check this out. I'm going to have a variable, and I'm not going to call it A or X or these typical variable names that you use in math. I'm going to call it I just because that's more traditional for computer science, and I'll explain why in a moment. And I'm going to set it at a value of zero. And then I'm going to go while this variable is less than, in this case, to get them across, to get corralled across the world and move nine times, I'm going to say as long as the i value is less than nine. If the i value is less than nine, and it certainly is starting that way at zero, then I'm going to have corral move. You know what that accomplishes. At this point, I don't have everything that I need for this to work, and we're going to end up with an infinite loop because what's going to happen is the code is going to go around. And let me just see if this, in fact, is going to work. So let's just go to, okay, well, no, no, do you need to choose the curl commands? We'll go inside a while loop. Oh, no. Okay, so we're going to have to do this. This is not the way I did it in class, obviously. Um, we'll do this over in IntelliJ. We'll do it with Java. So I'll just make a new class. Just make a new class. It's not going to look that different than uh, it would over in Code High School. So you're getting a little bit extra here that the other guys didn't get, but I do need to I excuse, excuse me. I do need to do PSVM. A couple of things like that that uh, you don't need to understand. But so let me do the same stuff that I had. Instead of going var, I'm going to go int for integer. I starts at zero. And I'm going to go while I is less than nine. And in terms of the move, I don't have the ability here in this integrated development environment to have a little dog move around. I could do graphics and work at this for the weekend and maybe be able to do that, but not right now. So all I'm going to do is just do this system.outprint line, which will print to the screen something. I'll say, uh, woof. Okay, so that's going to go woof. How about woof? I have moved one space. Okay, in fact, yeah, I think you'll be able to follow this, so I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go, I'm going to do this I plus one. I'm going to try not to get carried away with this, but when I run it, you're going to see what's going on and, and everything will be fine. Um, and in fact, let me just put this in parentheses. So, let's just run this and see what we get down here for the output. Uh, it's going to be infinite. Well, yeah, that, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to see an infinite loop where this is going to go on forever and ever and ever until I stop it. Okay, blah, 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 blah. It's going on forever, and the way you get out of this, and everybody's going to see this sooner or later in a couple of months when we get into Java. This is Java, by the way, but anyway, I'm going to stop it. Because the problem is that one, that I, is not changing. So the third and final piece 
to make this loop work properly is to make the i value to become whatever it was plus 1. You probably want to stop the video at this point, maybe even take a deep breath and take a stretch and come back and watch it again, but maybe not. One way or another, here we go. What this does properly now, by the way, let's run it. And you should see that we should go, woof, I've moved up to nine spaces. So I've repeated something nine times because I have a variable, i, I have this value i that started at zero. While the value of i was less than nine, I printed, woof, I have moved i plus one times. Since the i started at zero, I didn't want to see him, I've moved one space. I wanted to start it with, with one, that's why I added one. Okay, so woof, I have moved zero plus, because it's zero plus one is one space. And then what happens, you see, is we loop around and around and around and around like this. Okay, so the i goes up by one and we loop back up. So the second time through this loop, i is going to be not zero, but one. One still less than nine, so we print out I have moved one plus one or two spaces. I goes up by one again, so it's going to be you now two. Two is still less than nine, so that's still true. That is still true. So we get in and we print out um, I moved three spaces, blah, 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 blah. Probably makes more sense to have the S there. So there are these one, two, and three, which by the way, you can do a shortcut to make it look more like what we're going to be seeing in the for loop by going i plus plus, it does the same thing. That just bumps the value of i up by one, I'll prove it. And we're still repeating something nine times and getting what I explained just now. So one piece, declaring a variable, Second piece, checking a condition which uses the variable to see if it's true or false, and changing the variable so that sooner or later this will become false and the loop can end. So if I look over here, and I'll just leave this here, maybe I'll comment it out, and I'll put in the I++. Oh, do that again. Um, yeah, I'll just comment it out here in just a second. Let me put it up here so you can see it more clearly. Star asterisk. And down here, asterisk star. It's a shame that doesn't work. Uh, that it's not reading it, but but I understand that. That's fine. Because when we get to the while loop, we'll do it slightly differently. Basically, what we're going to say, if you want to still follow this, is while the front is clear, moves, right? So we go, front's clear, front's clear, front's clear, front's clear, front. He gets to here, the front's not clear, so he stops. But anyway, now we go to the for loop as will be shown in the video if you haven't seen the video yet. For var, and now I'll just copy and paste to show you that the same pieces are used. Copy, paste, semicolon, space, copy, paste, semicolon, space, and copy and paste. So when you first see that, I guess that's the other thing maybe that I didn't say to you at the end of the last video, but I did to the folks in class at the end of the second last class, was when you first see this, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. How do we get from move, which I get, and take ball, which I get, to four of our i equals zero, semicolon i, whoa, 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 yeah, how did we ramp things up so quickly? And the answer, which I'll give you right now, is that this is just a very standard structure and a very standard way of writing it through many programming languages, and it's been around for years and years and years, and new programming languages just adopt it as, as being the standard way that people are used to. So if you're a programmer and you program in another programming languages, you look at that and you're like, yep, that works the same way. It looks the same way as C, C Sharp, C++, whatever I was working on, or Python, or it looks slightly different there. But, but basically, so hopefully what I have shown you, and again, you might have to watch this one over a little bit, is that with these three pieces, one, two, three, 
shown in Java over here, one, two, three, with these three pieces, a variable, checking to see if it, it uh, results in a condition being true, and continuing the loop as long as it is true, moving the loop control variable towards something that's false, it works. So if I go move, then this structure will achieve moving nine times. Let me just change this to maybe four just to see that it's true that that's going to run four. And now if I change it to seven and I run it again, it's going to run seven. And then if we take it to the nine, it's not just running to the edge of the world, it's running by moving nine times. So, in the same way that, and I think a couple minutes ago I went through this more quickly, so or too quickly, so let me do this for the fourth time, just one last time, and then you'll see how the same thing is happening over the for loop. One more time, I have this initial declaration of a variable of a certain value, usually we start at zero, while a certain condition using it is true, it is true that 0 is less than 9. While that's true, I will repeat something. But in order to make this eventually false, so that the loop will end eventually, this i has to change. And usually what we do if we started it at 0 is we just keep on adding 1 to it each time through the loop. And so 9 times through the loop, and we will get up to a false situation here that we'll have a 9 which you know 9 is not less than 9 it's equal to 9 so that's false this will repeat stuff nine times so so will this it's just that the variable gets declared right here once the thing that gets checked as we go through each time is this middle part and this last part shows us what happens to the loop control variable each time through. Something that is going to result in ultimately this condition being false. Having the initial i of 0 go up by 1 each time means we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And eventually, as with the other example, we'll have a false situation where 9 is not less than 9, so we stop. That's the for loop, and that's really quite long and uh, different for you, pro probably, explanation of it. But with the advantage of having this as a video, I think if you watch me talking about that a couple of times, I think you're going to get it. And I think you're going to get it a whole lot more solidly and uh, for good than if you just memorize that, which is what most people do, the 99.99% .99 of the time that people do this. Of course, like I say, just one more tangential point here is that you know all programmers only learn this once. They don't have to learn it again and again for different programming languages because it always works. Not always, exactly the same way, but most of the time it works basically the same way. And looks basically the same way. So there are a whole bunch of... Um, exercises to do here, but a couple more examples. So from the video, again, I don't have to say a whole lot about what's in the video. You do watch it, but it looks like we're going to repeat something six times because i starts at zero. It's going to go up one each time, and we're going to continue as long as i is less than six. So zero, one, two, three, four, five will all have it repeat. So, you know, and there's no way I can't, I'm not filming myself here. So let me just show you this. Zero, two, three, four, five. Just keep in mind that those are the only numbers from zero up to five for which this will be true. So the last value of i is actually going to be five because five is less than six, so he's going to put a ball. But then when it goes up to six, it's going to be false and we, we don't get in. But just keep in mind, that's okay because we're including zero here. So this is actually six things. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers for which this will be true. So we will put 6 balls. And then note that 
there's just this extra move. The move's not in the for loop, so the move's not going to be repeated six times. Corral's not going to move across six times. He's going to do the loop. He's going to put a ball there six times, and then he's going to leave the loop, and he's going to go to that move. So I'll reset it, and you'll see. Loop, 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 loop. And the other thing now to look at as well is the loop control variable will be shown down here, which is quite convenient, particularly as we move on to more complicated things, just to keep track of what that variable is, just to check what you're thinking in your head. So how many times have I clicked it? Three. So now it goes again. And we can't see the tennis balls being put there yet because he's on top of it. But let me just show you that it, that it works, first of all. So there you go. It did work. Um, if I just go back, right, so when I was five, we did put the ball, and then we checked. I guess it's still five, so now we check is five less than six, yes. So he puts a tennis ball, we can't see it, but he's putting another one there. I is going to go up to six before we get up here. Okay, and now it checks to see is six less than six, and the answer is no. So it's not going to put a ball. There will be six balls there, just you have to trust that, and he's going to get out of the loop, not do any more put balls, go to the next line of code, which is move. And he moves, and there you go, and we can see there are six tennis balls. So, uh, I can tell you that the internet was giving issues again in the lab, which, uh, don't worry, we've got great everything at our school, and we've actually just bumped up from one gigabit um, backbone lines to five gigabits, so, you know, we're, we've got really fast internet, but there's something that's not quite right. What I'm getting to that is that with one of the classes, I just had to let them work on their own from here on, because I couldn't project, and they did fine. They needed a little bit of help, but... So hopefully you'll be fine as well. This one, stack 100 tennis balls in front of Corel. It has to move to the stack. That's pretty easy, but like how many times does he move? 100 times? No, he just moves once. And then he takes all the tennis balls. So there's going to be a for loop where he takes ball. Like a for loop, I'll just say it's going to be if our i is assigned 0, as long as i is less than 100, i++. plus plus and then take ball. And then he moves off, right? So you can see that there are no tennis balls left. Okay. Uh, I'll just, so I'll just talk through these and they get, they get more challenging for sure. Dizzy Carell, what to say about this one? Read through it. Read through it. He doesn't, I mean, one person today was saying, but nothing happens. We have this to begin with, and this is to end, so what's going on? Well, when you run it, he's going to be spinning around, as the instructions say. And there you go. The, the uh, four tennis balls. And just by me saying for, oh, oh, I forgot to mention one thing. Let me just add this one other thing that uh, I'll put a for loop, and I'll just use this since the while loop works here. And I'm going to go for, I'll do the same thing, exactly the same thing. Int i zero, i is less than, what do we have here? Nine, i plus plus. And we're going to go, well, we'll just do exactly the same thing. So this line. Here, yeah, the difference between uh, is I still in memory? Yeah, it is. So I'm going to call this I1, and I think I'll not talk about why right now because it could be any. It could be, maybe you'd be happier if I just did give it like A. You're used to A, so we'll call it A instead. It doesn't matter what we call it. So A. Um, yeah, the question, well, if these two things do exactly the same thing, and they do, then why do we have the while loop and also the for loop? And the answer is that 
as the video will have told you, and I could just reiterate here, a for loop we use when we know exactly how many times we want to do something. Here, we want to do something nine times. So we use a for loop. Here, this isn't necessarily the proper way to use a while loop. A better way to use a while loop is beyond what I can show you now. How can I do this? Um, there's going to be some sort of a condition here, like, well, like Corral's going to use. Front is clear. And <laughs> like I almost want to say close your eyes. Close your eyes while I do that. I just want to make that not red. So Uh, I'll just make this as simple as I as I can. That's going to be an infinite loop. Um, well, I won't run it. So public static. So uh, that's more like the way that a while loop would. And so just ignore this for now. Would uh, would look while loops normally loop as long as some condition is true for which we don't know how long it will be true. We, we don't know the implementation of this function, although you just saw I did something very, very simple. But for now, just keep in mind that whiles are, are looping structures that loop an indetermined number of times. So if this actually was more correct, maybe the first time it would run nine times through the loop, but the second time maybe it would run three times through the loop, and the third time it would loop through 994 times. We don't, we don't know. So while loops, are, while, loops, while loops are used when the number of times we want to repeat something is unknown, and for loops are used when the number of times we want to loop is known and exact. Yeah, we, we did a lot today, and all this stuff we're going to be repeating. But in this case, for sure, it makes sense to do a for loop because it's not like, oh, it looks like we're going to do something maybe three times if we run it the first time and 16 times if we run it the second. No, what we're going to do, you know, putting a ball there and moving, putting a ball there and moving putting a ball there. We're going to be repeating something four times. So there's going to be a for loop for this, but a square one, two, three, four. There's going to be a loop. It, it just put it inside the start for now. That, um, yeah, it's going to be a, a for loop for repeating something the number four times. Let me just go directly. Oh, that was the same one. Oops. So there's one other, lots of hurdles. One of the ways as we move forward, you're going to know to do a for loop instead of a while loop, or a while loop instead of a for loop. I mean, right now you know it's a for loop because it's the for loop uh, exercise, chapter unit number nine, right? But later on, do I use a for loop or do I use a while loop? Well, in this case, it says there are five hurdles. So the idea is he's got to go up and over these. Well, if there are five hurdles, there are five hurdles. It's not like sometimes there are five, sometimes there are six. And we don't know how many there are going to be. No, no, no. It says there are five hurdles. So you're going to have a for loop, which will loop five times. So you're going to have, you know, four of our i is sine zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. And then the other thing here, it does say that you will need to write a jump hurdle as part of your function. So basically, hopefully, either the first time through listening to me with this video or the second or third time through, with this uh, as we you know get into the real thing here that you can see that it's going to be jump hurdle it's going to be in your for loop so i will get you started with this one then i'll just do the for loop for var i is assigned zero you get used to it i is less than there are five hurdles five i plus plus so the thing you're going to repeat five times is the call to the function and they said they wanted you to call it jump hurdle. So there you go. You're going to have jump hurdle there. And then after the start function down here, you're going to have your function start hurdle. 
And then the question is, <clears throat> what is that? And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so geez, what to say there, except that this was a lot. And I hope you come back soon. And if you have trouble with this, and you can't come back soon, I mean, obviously, I understand. Um, you know, maybe, I'm just thinking aloud here, and I don't want to take this video too long, but maybe if people start to get stuck, we will have to do uh, virtual lessons and just pick a time that's kind of convenient for most of us. We'll get to that when we get to that. Try all this on your own. Go back, take a look at the videos, uh, do the quiz step by step. Go for it. Certainly email me any questions if you have them. And for now, just see if you can do it. Deep breath, take a break, come back and, and go for it.